After five years of casually searching, I was able to finally find a pair of really good Sony APM 790 speakers. APM stands for Accurate Pistonic Motion. Now, I don't think these speakers are audiophile by what audiophile standards would be, but they are certainly a great set of speakers, and they are vintage, and they are from the late 80s. My love of these speakers actually came from this set right here, the Sony APM 990, which was part of this component system that my parents had. Like many of the systems from that era, it came with a monster setup like this, it had every component, and of course speakers to match. From what I can tell, I don't think there's much difference between the 990s and the 790s other than the built-in stand. Typically when you see these online for sale, the speakers are in poor condition, the foam's already rotted, there's gashes in the speakers, and it's usually a really sad sight to see considering how many people love these. So you can imagine my delight when I found a pair of these in fantastic condition. There was only one problem, they didn't sound very good. Anytime you'd hear the bass, it would rattle the cabinet, and the overall sound was extremely mid-rangey. In addition to that, the back part of the cabinet on this particular speaker was loose and pretty much coming off. So I figured I would take it apart and see what I could find. You'll see just how easy it is for me to remove this back panel. I'm just using a flathead screwdriver and gently prying at it. After 30 plus years, I guess the glue just dried up and gave out. And here you'll be able to see exactly what I mean. There's really just nothing but dried glue. No hold at all. And here's what the inside looks like without the back on. Overall, it's pretty clean with no signs of any obvious damage. After doing a little bit of research, I found out that the most likely reason for the mid-range sound issue was this right here, these capacitors. So when the signal gets sent from the stereo into the speakers, it has to pass through these capacitors. It's the capacitors that send the proper frequency to the right speaker. So in order to fix this, I have to replace these. Just look for the markings on the capacitors themselves, and that's what you need to replace them with. Here, there are three things that I'm looking for. Microfarads, voltage, and polarity. Here, NP stands for non-polarized, which means they can be installed in any direction. Some capacitors have a minus sign running up and down the side of it. That would mean that it is polarized, and you would have to install it in the correct direction for the circuit to run properly. So, I went online, typed in the value of the capacitors that I needed, and placed an order. And two days later, they show up, and I'm ready to continue with my repair. You'll notice that these are much smaller than the original set that's in these speakers, uh, but I guess that's just what happens over time. Things get smaller and more efficient. With my soldering iron, I'm going to remove the old capacitors and replace them with the new ones. There's plenty of original solder here, so I'm going to try and use that instead of installing new if possible. So it looks like I need a little bit more solder here, so I'm just going to add a tiny bit to this one. Now I'm just going to snip off the excess wire. And here's what it looks like all finished. So with that out of the way, I'm now going to turn my attention to the cabinets and speakers themselves. And really all I'm doing is just disassembling it, cleaning it the best I can, and then putting it back together. Now I'm not going to use any power tools here because I don't want it to accidentally slip out of the groove and damage anything, so I'm going to do everything by hand. The first piece I'm removing here is this upper speaker surround and it is joined together, so it does take care of both the mid-range and the tweeter. In similar fashion, I'm going to use a hand tool to remove the speaker as well. The speaker is extremely clean, and there's no damage that I can see. And here I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did before. I'm going to use a hand tool to be very careful, and I'm going to start with the surround and then, of course, move on to the speaker next.
Here you can really see just how fantastic of a condition that these speakers are in for their age. No gashes, the foam isn't rotted, um, everything's really clean. Based on the condition that you see here, you can tell why I chose this set. Continuing along with the disassembly, here I'm going to remove the base stand with an Allen wrench. Here I'm using some Windex and a parts cleaning brush. This will remove the years of built up dirt that's accumulated here. And of course I'm also using a paper towel to wipe it down as well. And the same thing goes for the rest of the cabinet. Some Windex and paper towels goes a long way. Here I'm just using my parts cleaning brush to get off any extra dirt that was inside the cabinet. And back to that glue I was telling you about, here's a close-up of the very dried glue on the inside. I was somewhat nervous to disassemble this part of the bottom foot because of these snaps right here. I'm concerned that if I try to remove them, that they'd be too brittle and would snap. So as gently as I could, I removed the snaps with no problem, and they came out with no breaks. So I brought all the plastic pieces into the utility sink, used some paper towel, a parts cleaning brush, Windex, and also a sponge. This was probably the dirtiest piece out of all. At first glance, it may look like that dirt is really caked in there. But in reality, I think it's actually just a design part of the plastic to make it look like it's got wood grain because try as I may, I could not get it any cleaner than what it looked like here. So now I moved my attention to the grill. So this piece smelled a little musty, like it may have been in a basement or possibly a garage. But that's okay, because I think I can fix that with some baby soap and some warm water. Here I'm just gonna add the soap very liberally. And then I'm going to use my hand to get the soap into the grill. The reason I'm using my hand and not a brush is because I want to be able to feel and go very gently over the grill cloth as to not puncture or rip anything. Once it's all soaked up, I'm just going to rinse it with warm water. Now I'm just going to lay it grill face down and pat it dry with a towel. So here is all the pieces ready for reassembly, which is essentially everything I've just shown you in this video, except in reverse. I'm basically at the final assembly part. The wiring harness is going through the back. Of course, I'm going to hook up the speakers to it and push this into the back slot as well. And of course, just remember to put the correct wire to the correct speaker. I'm not sure if this is the right thing to do, but instead of gluing the back on, I actually ended up using some small finishing nails to attach the back to the cabinet. I figured if this doesn't work, I can always just pull them out and actually use glue if I need to. So now the moment of truth, hooking it up and seeing if everything I've done actually worked. And I can tell you without a doubt, yes it did. I'm now back in business with a great set of speakers that I remember from my youth.